Welcome back to American Countdown. For this segment of the show, we're going to be discussing the possibility of whether or not a rushed vaccine is simply a good idea. And for that, we can and should look at history. There is still the talk out there of rushing a COVID-19 vaccine out to the public. The president has even talked about the possibility of using the military to distribute the vaccine. There are those who suggest that that is a questionable idea at best. Indeed, the history of rushing vaccines in any context have tended not to work out well, but particularly in the flu context, when in 1976 it resulted in far more damage and far more injuries than the virus itself ever did cause that year. It ended up being a CBS 60 Minutes story several years later, back when you could sue vaccine makers. These days, after those developments took place in the early mid-1980s, there was a push by the vaccine industry to make them immune from any uh, lawsuits related to childhood vaccine, instead creating kind of an administrative court in Washington, D.C. called the Vaccine Court, which would not allow any discovery into whether there's anything problematic to the vaccines, allowed for strict liability. If an injury was caused by a vaccine, some amount would be awarded by an administrative judge. But most critically, it prevented the juries from hearing about what was happening with vaccines and most essentially prevented discovery into whether the vaccines were safe and what behaviors were taking place on the behalf and at the behest of Big Pharma. Big Pharma used vaccines as sort of the magic Uh, Almost like it had a magical properties, like you can take a chemical drug, create it, manufacture it, distribute it, give it to people. And all of the risks that take place with any other drug risk in terms of whether or not it's a good chemical compound and has been properly tested for safety purposes on all populations and in, uh, in all circumstances. Secondly, whether or not the drug was simply made right at the at the producer level, at the uh, maker level. Secondly, whether or not anything happened to it in the distribution of it. Fourth, whether anything went wrong in terms of a doctor or nurse giving it, either prescribing it or how it was given, given the circumstances or situation that might apply. All of them magically immune overnight. And you could no longer have discovery into what they did and why they did it and how they did it or anything else. And it also removed the deterrence. Instead, suddenly that drug, if it was called anything else, would be subject to legal scrutiny and jury scrutiny. Magically, you just put a different label on it. You no longer called it a drug. You called it a vaccine. And if you call it a vaccine, it was magically immune from questions or criticism. Indeed, to this very day, if you simply question vaccines, the media, the press, the institutional narrative will immediately isolate you and marginalize you and put you outside the community. You're a, quote, anti-vaxxer, as if questioning a particular vaccine or a particular vaccine legal system means that you believe every drug ever made that's a vaccine should never be available. Indeed, I have not found anyone yet that's an actual pure anti-vaxxer. Everyone that I've met that has questions about vaccines that I've studied or read or reviewed, they usually just simply have questions about a particular vaccine or the timing of when a vaccine is given or whether all vaccines are good or whether a rushed vaccine is a good idea. Put down simply, they're willing to be skeptical of big pharma. And in almost every case, their skepticism of big pharma is rooted in their life experience. It's their life experience, particularly, for example, take the famous vaccine autism debate that arose simply because a lot of families started people who are complete believers in vaccines saw uh, injuries to their children in a close time frame to when a vaccine was given to them that that led them to believe there could be a causative relationship between the two. And they were being denied their lived experience, their learned experience, their observed experience, which is the foundation of all investigation, evidence and science by the medical establishment and the media establishment. Because for big pharma, the vaccine is the magic pill that makes what they do sound wonderful and great and grand. Not that they're just money grubbers out to make a penny, nickel, dime or dollar any way they can. Not because there's a long history of those in the white lab coats misusing and abusing their power, whether at the corporate or individual level, to propagate their particular agenda on the world, of which there is a lot of both. 
Indeed, if you go through the long history of medicine, it looks more like witchcraft than it does look like science. Going If we go back centuries, heck, we can just go back 100 years and see a lot of the insanity that was being propounded as medicine. So the idea that we should always defer to the white lab coats, that we should always defer to big pharma, has not been an approach that has usually worked for the protection of the public's best interest. So many of these parents started raising these questions, and they in turn reached out to a gastroenterologist in London who was a well-regarded, well-respected scholar at a, uh, prof- at a after practicing for many years at a royal school of medicine there in the U.K., asking about the connection between autism and a stomach disorder, which was his area of expertise. He simply reported several years later, by the way, they report a connection between taking the three different vaccines of MMR, which used to be given separately and given at different times. And beginning in the 90s, they started to consolidate all three and gave them at an earlier time frame. Uh, So it became one vaccine, taking the three separate ones into one, giving it at one time, giving it between the ages of 12 and 18 months. And that the parents reported in their life experience, their learned experience, their observed experience, that there was a connection between that particular vaccine, the timing in which their, their child received the vaccine, and they believed the onset of certain conditions related to the child's autism. The, and given the explosion of autism in the Western world, there were many questions about what the source of this explosion was because the common scientific definition that, oh, it's actually in your uh, genetic ancestry can't, be, can't explain the dramatic rise in incidence of occurrence. So he simply reported in his report that there was a connection between autism and uh, and the stomach disorder. And during this time frame, he'd gone out and tried to find alternative vaccines. He'd researched the MMR vaccine in particular. He ended up reaching out to lawyers who were willing to challenge it. They ended up uh, paying him as part of that process to do the research. All of that would somehow be become bad acts, by the way, in the future. But all the study reported is, by the way, parents report. There's a connection between autism and vaccines and this particular vaccine given at this particular time frame. We don't report anything. We have no conclusion, something for future study. Well, it led to such an onslaught of media coverage and negativity. Big Pharma would wage a personal war against him. And within 10 years, this is a person who would be completely defrocked, have his medical license taken away, have Bill Gates defame him on a regular basis on CNN with Anderson Cooper, who was also happy to defame him on a regular basis. And that's the mindset and mentality when simply one person asked one question about one vaccine, and that's it. All he was questioning is, is it the best idea to give MMR at the same time in one vaccine between 12 and 18 months when MMR did not go through the diligent safety studies that the separate individual vaccines had done? And given that there was evidence that giving it at the same time at that age could be at risk for certain populations. Indeed, the CDC had discovered the same in 2004, but then hid and suppressed the data, which would come out later in a movie documentary called Vaxxed, which would go through that whole story. But the topic was so controversial that Robert De Niro had to pull the film from the Tribeca Film Festival. This is the mindset and mentality around the word vaccine. Somehow it's a magical dose like manna from heaven that anybody who questions it is insane and simply wants your child to die. That's the narrative pushed by the press. But indeed, we should look back, not only the CBS 60 Minutes about the swine flu vaccine and the disasters that happened in the 1970s, or the billions of dollars that have been paid out in the last two decades by the vaccine court, which is giving out the lowest amount it can for all of the known injuries caused by vaccines, also suppressed by the press, for the unusual immunity vaccine companies enjoy from liability from from their courses of conduct and their actions in ways that no other industry in America has. You don't need immunity if you've done nothing wrong. You need immunity when you believe you can be prosecuted for doing something wrong. And when you're given the kind of immunity that big vaccine companies were given, that big pharma was given for what has turned out in many cases very profitable vaccines, then you know there's something wrong. Indeed, if you listen to the core pitch that happened to lead to that legislation in the first place, it was there was so much risk with vaccines that they believed they would get sued out into oblivion if they were allowed to function. Well, what they're really saying is that if juries had an honest evidence and honest information and an honest opportunity to judge vaccines, they would conclude they caused more risk than benefit. 
That's what they're really saying. That's what they're really implicitly admitting in getting that legislation in the first place. We should not be afraid to question things that the media holds up as so holy and sacred and sacrosanct that it is the name that cannot be mentioned or the topic that cannot be discussed. 